This is chapter six, ionic and molecular compounds. And this is section two, where we're gonna be focusing on ionic compounds. In particular, we're gonna be looking at how positive and negative ions come together to form compounds, how we can determine the formula of those compounds, and what names we can give to those compounds. But first, let's review some of the properties of ionic compounds. We know that compounds consist of positive and negative ions both together. You can't have a compound from all positive ions or all negative ions because the electrostatic forces will push them apart and they won't be stable. So you need both positive and negative in order to achieve a neutral compound. The attractions between the positive and negative ions are mostly standard electrostatic interactions or attractions, uh, but we call them ionic bonds in the context of ionic compounds. Because ionic compounds feature these very strong electrostatic bonds, which are ionic bonds, and because there are so many ions all networked together in a typical ionic compound, they tend to have very high melting points. That makes them solids at room temperature. Sodium chloride is probably the best known ionic compound. It's more commonly known as table salt, so most of us eat it almost every day. Sodium chloride is formed from sodium ions, from sodium atoms that have lost their electrons to become plus one ions, and chloride ions, which are chlorine atoms that have gained an electron to become minus one ions. And so when sodium and chlorine react together, they form this network of ions that you see here. And this is a representation of the crystal structure of sodium chloride, where the sodium ions are these smaller purple spheres, and the chloride ions are the larger green spheres. And you can see that it's a extended network of interpenetrating ions. So how do we write the chemical formula for an ionic compound or for a compound in general? Well, it is a little bit different between ionic and covalent compounds because of the difference between the large extended networks for ionic compounds versus the individual discrete molecules or groups of atoms that form covalent compounds. So in an ionic compound, the subscripts in the chemical formula indicate the lowest whole number ratio of the elements included in the compound. So in the case of sodium chloride, one sodium atom loses an electron and becomes a sodium plus ion. One chloride, chlorine atom gains an electron and becomes a chloride ion. So simple one-to-one -one exchange. One loses a single electron and one gains a single electron. And so when they combine together, you need only one of each in order for it to be neutral. One positive charge balances one negative charge, right? as you can see here. And therefore, there's only a uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the two elements. And so in the formula, we write it as a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? We don't need the subscript that says one because if it's there, it's implied, right? If, it, if there weren't any of that element there, you wouldn't write it in the symbol. So the sum of ionic charges in the formula has to equal zero for a neutral ionic compound, okay? The total positive charge equals the total negative charge. In this case, that gives you a simple one-to-one -one ratio between the actual ions themselves. But it's not always the case that you're gonna have a one-to-one -one ratio between the positive ions and the negative ions. Okay? The total positive charge will always equal the total negative charge if we're dealing with a neutral compound, which we usually are. But that doesn't mean that the po number of positive ions equals the number of negative ions. And so here's an example. We have sodium coming into contact with sulfur and the sodium ions are still plus one charge. Sodium is still an element that has only a single valence electron and when it loses it, it becomes plus one. But sulfur on the other hand is two electrons short of an octet. And so sulfur needs to gain two electrons in order to achieve a stable octet. So if you only had one sodium and one sulfur, the charge wouldn't balance because that sodium would only be able to transfer one electron and sulfur would still not be, uh, would still not have a full octet. So instead, two sodium atoms need to combine with sulfur and each of them contributes one electron to sulfur's octet. They both become sodium plus one and the sulfur having gained two electrons becomes sulfide, which is the S2 minus ion that you see down here. 
So this still gives them a charge balance. You have two ions of sodium that each have just a plus one charge, and that is balanced by the one ion of sulfur that by itself has a minus two charge. So overall charge neutrality is still maintained, but the number of ions is not equal. The number of positive ions does not equal the number of negative ions. And so to reflect this in the chemical formula, we put this two here next to sodium to indicate that there are two sodiums for every sulfur. Now remember, when this actually happens, you generally have a huge number of sodium and sulfur ions combining together and forming uh, an extended network. And so it's not really possible to talk about an individual molecule of an ionic compound the way it is for a covalent, which we'll see later. And so this number, the numbers in the formula here, really just represent, again, the, the smallest whole number ratio between the positive and the negative ions. Here's another example, uh, in sort of the opposite. In this case, you have a metal with two valence electrons, and so it can lose both of them to become a two plus ion. But the nonmetal that it's interacting with is a group seven metal, chlorine, which has seven valence electrons. So the chlorine only needs one electron to get a satisfied octet, to fill its octet. So if magnesium has two electrons to give, it needs to find two chlorine atoms. And that creates two chloride ions and leaves the magnesium two plus bonded to both with ionic bonds. Okay? So again, the charge neutrality is still the same. This time you have one positive ion with a plus two charge and two negative ions, each with a minus one charge, and it still balances out to zero. That's neutral. Okay? But this time it's the chlorines that you have two of, and so the two comes after the chlorine in the formula. Okay? So remember, the, the number, the subscript number following the element tells you how many of that atom you have. And in the case of ionic formulas, it's really telling you the lowest whole number ratio between that element and the other elements in the formula. Okay. So we write charges as superscripts when we're just talking about the individual ions, but when we write the chemical formula for an ionic compound, you do not put in superscripts or charges. Okay, You put in these subscripts, which have a, a completely different meaning, so don't get those confused. So how would we write the ionic formula for the compound formed from barium 2 plus and chloride Cl minus ions? Well, we have to compare the charges. The first thing we should do is write the symbols for the ions that we're dealing with. In this case, the problem gives us the ions directly. We have the barium 2 plus over here, and so we write that on the left-hand side. And then we have the Cl minus over here, and so we can write that here on the right-hand side. Uh, in the formula, we generally want to write the positive ion first, and so it's easier, generally, we think about keeping the positive ions on the left-hand side. Okay. Now, if we take just one of each of these ions, we can see that there's more positive charge than negative charge. Right? The positive side is a plus two, whereas the negative side is a minus one. Okay? So that gives us too much positive charge. In order to balance that and bring it back to being neutral, we have to add another negative ion. And so in this case, we're adding another chloride because that's the negative ion we're dealing with. We only have barium and chloride available. And so at this point, we can see that the charge does balance. We have the two plus from the barium and the minus one from two different chlorides for a total of minus two. And so if you add those together, you get zero. So now that the positive charge and the negative charges are equal, we can see that it takes one barium and two chloride ions to achieve this. And so we can write the formula for this as BaCl2. Okay? Again, we write the positive ion first, and that's almost always going to be the metal. We'll see some exceptions later on, but for now, you always write the metal first and the non-metal second. Okay? That's the cation, the positive ion first, because that's the metal, and the anion, or the negative ion second, and that'll be the non-metal. So here's a few examples of this, okay? and these are multiple choice, which sometimes can make it a little bit easier. Okay? So in this case, we don't necessarily have to come up with the formula from scratch. We can sort of check these formulas and see if the 
the proposed formula in the answer is actually charge neutral. And if it's not, then we know it's not the correct formula. Okay? So to give you an example of that, sodium plus oxide. Sodium is Na plus, oxide is O2 minus. Okay? So you might be able to see already that you'll need two sodiums for each oxygen. But let's go through the answers one by one and take a look, right? A says sodium, NaO, right? One sodium and one oxygen. So with one sodium and one oxygen, you would have a minus one charge. Plus one, minus two gives you minus one. That's not neutral, so it can't be that. With B, you have two sodiums and one oxygen. The formula is Na2O. So with two sodiums, you have a plus two charge. And then with the oxygen, you have a minus two charge and that equals zero. So this is gonna be our answer. And just to double check, we can check out C and we see that we have a plus one charge from the single sodium, right? This formula is NaO2. So plus one charge from the sodium and then minus two oxygen atoms, each of which has a charge of negative two. So in total, these oxygens actually have a charge of negative four. And so this would have a charge of minus three, which is definitely not zero. And so it is certainly not C, okay? So this confirms that our answer is B. The correct formula for sodium and oxygen together is Na2O. It takes two sodiums with a single positive to balance the one oxygen with a two minus. If we look at the second question, we have aluminum three plus and chloride, Cl minus. And so again, since chloride is a negative one, we can just use as many chlorides as we need to balance out the charge on aluminum. Okay, so aluminum is three plus. If we need three minuses, then we'll have to take three chlorides. That means one aluminum, three chlorides. Okay? So this is answer A. Okay? Again, if you look at the charges here, for this aluminum, you have plus three, and then with a single chloride, it's minus one. And so that would be a plus two charge. So that's no good. For Al3Cl, you have three aluminums and they're each plus three, right? And then the chloride is minus one. So three times three would be nine minus one. So this would be a plus eight charge and that's clearly not gonna work, okay? So again, A is the correct answer for question number two. For question number three, this is a little bit more difficult. This is one of the more difficult uh, questions like this that you'll get because neither of the ions has a single charge, positive or negative, okay? And so in this case, you actually have to find the least common multiple of them, in a sense, okay? Uh, so magnesium two plus, if we look at the formulas, right, this is magnesium two plus, we'll say plus two, and then nitride would be minus three, and so this would give us a minus one. That's not gonna work out, okay? Here we have two magnesium, so two times the plus two charge in magnesium, and then plus three nitrogens, and the charge on nitrogen is minus three, okay? So this is gonna turn out to be two times two, which is four, plus three times negative three, which is negative nine. So four minus nine is gonna give this a minus five charge. So that's no good, okay? This, that means this last one must be it, but to check it out, right? We have three times the charge on magnesium, which is plus two, right? and then two times the charge on nitrogen, which is minus three. So we can see that this is gonna work out. Three times two is plus six, plus two times negative three is minus six. And so this is gonna be equal to zero. And so this is the correct answer. Now, keep in mind, there is a shortcut where you can look at these superscripts and sort of swap places with them. So this three from the nitrogen would go down here next to the magnesium and the two from the magnesium would go down next to the nitrogen. And you can see that you would end up with the correct formula here. Um, but you have to be very careful using that approach because there are some cases when that will not give you the lowest, uh, the lowest whole number ratio between ions. And so you'll still need to further simplify it. So be very careful if you use that shortcut. And here are those answers again.